Hello, my dear students. Hope all of you are good and fine. Let's resume and let's figure out and know more instance about chapter 12, which is entitled Fatal, A Fatal Attraction. How about the setting? Setting, we are in London in 1792, and just simply three years had passed. Second, we're gonna go to Taliesin Bank, and of course, Taliesin Bank in which branch in England, not, or London, not in France. And we're gonna go to Dr. Manette's lodging in Soho Square. How about the main incidents or main events or main ideas of the chapter? First of all, we have a dialogue between Charles Darney and Mr. Lowry inside Taliesin Bank in London. Second, we have Mr. Lowry's strong reasons for traveling to Paris. And then we're gonna have Gabelle's letter. Who was Gabelle? The Gabelle, he used to be the servant of the Marquis. Gabelle, who was the one who was like, we call a tax collector, someone who was in charge of collecting taxes from the poor class. Gabelle was the same person when the Marquis had been murdered by Gaspard, as we all know. Charles Donny left Gabelle in charge of the chateau, the lands, the properties of France, and he gave him clear imperative forms, clear instructions, clear orders, never to collect rent or taxes anymore from the poor class. And we have Darn's decision to save Gabel. And we have like two notes or two message left by Charles Darny. One will be for Lucy Manette and the other will be for Dr. Alexander Manette. Let's elaborate each and every point. Three years of tempest. Tempest, I mean the French Revolution, the anger passed. And little Lucy, who's little Lucy simply? Yes, little Lucy, she was the daughter of Darny as well as Lucy Manette. She was about nine years old. The French Revolution succeeded in removing the royal royalty and aristocracy from power. No more king of France, no more queen of France. Simply the power all goes to who? To the jacks. France was still unsettled, why? Because, because still we have a lot of bloody actions. However, many members of the French, of the upper classes, I mean, who had fled, fled like when just ran away, escaped, who had fled to England, used Taliesin Bank as their favorite meeting place. Taliesin Bank, I mean, in England. Lucy, she still listened to the echoes in the corner, the echoing footsteps of people who change into wild beasts, like monsters. Okay, one afternoon at Taliesin Bank, of course in England, Dorney and Mr. Lorry discussed, they were talking, discussed what Mr. Lorry's impending, impend it means approach or about to happen. His own trip to where? To France, which means that Mr. Lorry, because of some urgent reasons, he had to travel from England, going to where? To France. Where in France? In Taliesin Bank in France. Why? Simply why? You're going to ask yourself why. I'm going to tell you why. Because he would manage, I mean, Mr. Laurie, Taliesin's Paris office, I mean, Taliesin Bank in Paris, and try to rescue some property and papers for Taliesin customers. Okay, let me elaborate more. They were afraid that the angry jacks and the mob in France, they might just do what? They might break into enter by force, okay, like assault by force, Taliesin Bank in France, and they might destroy, destroy it or destroy the documents of the customers. So that's why they had to send someone from Taliesin Bank in England to make sure that these documents are completely guarded, okay, or hidden in a good place. And of course, that person would be simply Mr. Laurie. Charles Darney, because he, 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 he was, let's say, he cared he cared too much for Mr. Laurie. He tried to do what? Tried to put him off. Okay? Tried to tell him not to go, not to travel, not to travel to where? To France. But how, can he, how can he convince him? Simply by listing some kind of clear apparent reasons. He said, Mr. Laurie shouldn't go to France because, let's see, number one, Paris at that time, it was a disorganized city, lacking safety, lacking security. It was a long destination going from England to France. And because of the what unchangeable what weather. Okay. 
Of course, would you imagine that Mr. Lowry, that kind of a good person, rational, wise, witty person, would ever listen to Darwin's advice? Of course, no. Why? Is it because he's stubborn? He's as tough as old boots? No. Simply because he had a great sense of duty and obligation. So Darwin's efforts went in vain, okay? As Mr. Lowry was greatly driven by a great sense of what? Of duty and obligation. Laurie decided to travel to France accompanied by Jerry Cruncher, his own assistant. So he was doing that simply for the sake of Taliesin Bank. So Mr. Laurie, he would travel from where to where? He's going to travel from England to France. When they were talking in Taliesin Bank, an official like someone high in rank in Taliesin Bank, I mean in England, he approached Mr. Laurie's desk. And that person, he had like a letter, like a note. That note was addressed, like, uh, uh, let's say, like the address itself, to the Marquis of Evermond of France. No one inside the bank knew or discovered the person to whom this letter was addressed. They couldn't figure out who, who was the new Marquis. All of us will know quite, quite well that the new marquis is what is Charles Dorney, okay? The people in Taliesin Bank started to utter, like to say some comments about the new marquis. Who's the new marquis? He is Charles Dorney. And they were unaware that they were speaking or talking about Charles Dorney, okay? Dorney offered, okay, to deliver the letter to the marquis. He said, Mr. Lorry, that Marquis, he is one of my friends, give me the letter and I'm going to give it to him. So Mr. Lorry, because he had a great confidence in Charles Dorney, he gave him the letter. Dorney, he took that letter and he went outside the bank, outside Taliesin Bank in England. He was completely alone and he opened the letter. The letter was sent to him by who? By Gabel. Okay, let's see what was inside the letter. Here it is. When Dorney read the letter, he was troubled to find that it was from who? It was from Gabel. Gabel had been imprisoned for acting like for serving Dar or for being Dorney's servant. Feeling guilty about Gabel's imprisonment, okay, and about leaving some matters unfinished, Dorney himself decided to save Gabel. How can he save Gabel? Yes, by traveling to France. Let's figure out what was written inside Gabel's letter. Gabel, he, in the letter, he said that he had been seized, captured, arrested, and he was brought to a prison in, in Paris. And that prison, it has the name of Prison of Abbey. By the way, girls and boys as well, uh, in France, I have a lot of prisons. I have a prison called La, For La Force, prison of called the Bastille, that we all know it, and also a prison called what? Abbey. So the, the mob, let's say, or the jacks, they seized uh, Gabel in a prison called Abbey. Okay, he, he said Gabel in the letter that he would have a trial and surely he would be sentenced to death. He would, he would lose his life. What was Gabel's crime? Gabel said in the letter that his crime was was treason, that he was like a traitor, simply because he was serving Charles Dorney, who was considered as an emigrant. The angry mob, okay, didn't listen to him. Listen to who? To Gabel. When he, when Gabel tried to defend Charles Dorney and clearing his master's reputation, they never listened to him, by the way. He, Gabel, mentioned that he received orders from Dorney never to collect taxes again. He ended his letter by begging Charles Dorney to help him. Here is the prison of Abbey. Here are just two photos for the prison. Take a look. Okay, Dorney was inspired by Mr. Laurie's bravery and his sense of duty and obligation. So he resolved. What do you mean by resolved? Like he made up his mind. He decided to go to France. Okay, why France? To save who? To save Gabel, his servant. Okay, he even imagined that he might be able, that's because Dorney was a, someone, a, a very good person, someone who has a great character, okay? Dorney believed that he might be able to calm some of who? Some of the who? Of the angry mob and jacks. Consequently, he wrote two letters explaining the situation to Lucy, his wife, and Dr. Manette, and then departed, I mean, he left for France alone. In Lucy's letter, 
he explained his strong sense of duty to go to Paris, like he had to go, he had no choice. And he felt confident that he wouldn't face any trouble ever. As for Dr. Manette's letter, he entrusted Lucy, okay, and his, and his dear child, I mean little Lucy, to his care, his care, care of who? Of Dr. Manette. And promised to send letters to prove his safety immediately after his arrival. Let me ask you, all of you, do you imagine that Dorney will be able to save Gabel? Okay? Do you imagine, assume, that Dorney was a good person by taking that or making that kind of decision to go to France to save Gabel, his servant? Can you just imagine the journey for Dorney from going to England, from going, or leaving England and going to France? And one more question as well. I said that Gabel, he, send, he was in prison, right? And he sent a letter to Charles Darney. If you just imagine, of course, that kind of a letter was like a trap. A trap for who? For Charles Darney. Because in chapter eight, if you remember, Ma uh, Madame de Forge, she said that if Darney's destiny, fate, was to come to France, he will come to France. And if he comes to France, that will be his end. So that's why she was searching for like a reason, a trap, to let Dorney travel, leave England, and go to France. That trap for him, it was Gabel's letter, because they knew that Dorney was a gallant, he was a true man, okay? He was a real man. And once he would receive that letter of Gabel, he himself would decide to travel to France to save Gabel. He left the two letters with a trusty porter, I mean Charles Darney, to be delivered half an hour before midnight. If we need to, uh, let's say, analyze some of, uh, analyze Darney's character, uh, mention some adjectives about him, okay, I would say that he proved, I mean Charles Darney, to be gallant, like he's a true man, okay, who encountered, like who faced a lot of difficulties, okay, with high spirit. He was devoted, loyal to his family. His sense of responsibility, okay, forbade, like it, the path of forbidden, forbade him to turn his back on, Gabel's, on Gabel or on his country. He had a strong feeling of duty and obligation, commitment, okay. Additionally, also moreover, Darnie remained unaware of some of the dangers, such as Madame de Forge register knitting, awaiting him. He had no idea that his name, as we said before in chapter uh, uh, 8, she knitted his name, do you remember that part, beside the name of who? Of Jean Versat. So which means that Darnie's life is going to be in great danger if he ever stepped inside France. You're going to see. Because, why? Because he renounced, like he gave up his property and his name, be, title being the new Marquis, he just imagined, uh, or he just thinks of himself as a common man, a common, okay? He didn't realize, however, that, we said before, it comes from the word what? Revolution, revolution. So we call it revolutionaries. And who's that person? He's a person who revolts. They, that kind of people in France still viewed him, still regarded him, regard Dorney, as the Marquis of Saint Evermont. They regard him that he is the new Marquis, and a French aristocrat who deserve to, to die. Who deserve to die. Okay? Thank you all, my dear students, and wish, wish you all best of luck.